guys, Dad Dash here, and I'm coming to you today with a special video that I've been wanting to do for some time, and it's a uh, basic multi-apping uh, video to show you uh, what you need to do if you're interested in multi-apping. Maybe you're already multi-apping, you're not happy with your results. Maybe you're happy with your results and you see this video, and it might give you a few things that maybe you haven't thought of, or maybe you've already thought of them. And if you, if you see some things in here and you want to offer some tips up in the comments, I encourage you to do so because this is all about everybody getting better by sharing information. Um, but I wanted to share with you the easiest way to multi-app. And the easiest way to multi-app, in my opinion, is obviously having as few devices as possible and being able to do it as safely as possible, especially as we're driving around and moving around our markets and being able to automate things as quickly and easily as possible. And the best way to do that is with an Android phone, with the Driver Utility Helper app and the Maximo app. And I'm going to show you what my setup is um, and how it works. And I'm going to give you some keys to successful multi-apping. So if that's something that you like, if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned with this video. Uh, hit that like button, share this, and subscribe. I'm also going to be doing a video showing you if you're not an Android fan, you can't stand Android, you want to stay with iPhone. I love iPhone personally. I have a personal iPhone device, and I will never leave that behind. But I have slowly evolved to where I understand now that I believe the Android operating system, specifically with the Samsung UI over top of it, is the strongest tool that you can have in your toolbox when trying to conquer the gig economy. And I want to share how I do things and how it can help you. And I think uh, make it a safer, better experience for you when you're out on the road and uh, show you these apps and show you how I use them um, and show you how I multi-app, uh, which is similar, I'm sure, to other other people too as well because I, I i got some of these ideas you know you, you you watch videos and you learn and you see what other people do and then you kind of evolve it to your own process so this is my own process that works in my market so take this and apply it to your market see what feedback you get make adjustments make it your own so anyways before we get into the actual apps and i show you the setup that i do let me, um, and we're not doing live orders right now. It's, you know, I'm, I will put videos out and ride along as I always do. And I will highlight some of these things that I'm doing now that I have this video so that you can see it in action. But we're just going to talk about showing you how to set it up, show you what it looks like, what the apps look like, et cetera. That's the point of this video. But, um, so let's first pull up, um, here we go. So this is, uh, keys and I've got, Apologize for my head uh, cutting off some of the stuff here, but keys to multi-apping. So these are three keys that I think uh, that you need to be aware of for successful multi-apping. Number one is turn on all your apps. So you need to be signed up with multiple apps, obviously, but you need to have all your apps on. That's that's including food delivery, grocery delivery. Have them all on so that you can see all the orders that are available out there and you can make the assessment of what is the best value for my time right now what is the app that's offering me the most for my time that i can get it done and again to me the standard is the most money fastest completion time is what i'm looking for and then the miles normally will follow behind a fast completion time but also you want to try to you know get good mileage on there so that because those are going to have have an effect but i'm more focused on time and money uh, the mile situation will, will take care of itself because if you're driving a bunch of miles, you're probably going to be on an order that's taking too long anyway. So you kind of really don't have to hone in too much on the miles because if you're focusing on orders that you can get done quickly, at the end of the day, you're going to be fine on your miles. Now, two, once you accept an offer, you turn off the other apps. Now, the shopping apps you can leave on because... You know, they're not penalizing you. The orders can continue to come through. And a lot of times with certain apps, you have amount, you have a long, you know, you might have, have the ability to delay your arrival to the store by 20, 30 minutes. So you can leave those on and see what's out there. 
Uh, or you can turn them off if you want to. It's up to you. What you know, you may not want to get those notifications coming through while you're trying to focus on getting your order delivered. But it's important you turn those apps off because once you are contracted by an app, you now work for that app for that period of time. You've now agreed on a contract to to work for that app, and it's important that you are focused on fulfilling that contract, satisfying your customers, which is the restaurant and the individual that ordered food and making sure all that goes smooth so you're getting a good customer rating and you're making sure you're not making mistakes and you're keeping the relationship with that app good. Um, now, the, the final piece is once you've picked up the order, you're on your way to the drop-off, you're a few minutes away from dropping it off, the key pillar is turn the apps back on. And I'm going to show you why it's so powerful and why Samsung is so powerful or really Android in general is so powerful and these apps are so powerful because it really helps for you to not have to be worrying about clicking on your phone and with the touch of a button, boom, you're back up on apps. So that's huge, that's important and it offers a level of automation that you can, um, that you can do and it takes a lot of the, a lot of the distraction away from what to, you know, having to worry about doing a lot, a lot of these things, uh, yourself and you can just hit a button and boom, it does it all. So my recommended time is when you're first starting out, first of all, just finish your order, power up the apps after it's done, take it slow. Eventually you can turn off, uh, what I would recommend is you turn off the, um, what's called the, uh, the, the control of the apps when you're using Drive utility and a uh, Maximo. Turn those functions off so they're they're not automatically controlling. And that way, you can turn the apps back on um, earlier. So, what I would recommend when you finally get ready to where you're ready to you know go to the next stage after you've got comfortable with this whole concept, turn the DoorDash app on. If DoorDash is one of the apps that you're not working at the moment, if you're not working that app, turn it on. Two minutes from the customer. Um, and the reason why I say that is because DoorDash is more precise in their times. Their goal is to get you an order that is pretty much going to be ready in the time frame that they're looking at. In the time frame that they're looking at um, from where you're at and accepted the order. So it's a lot more dangerous to accept an order, especially if you're still going a few few minutes down the road and you've got to double back. I've gotten contract violations doing that, and I, I would caution yourself, two minutes has been the spot, the sweet spot with DoorDash that I've found that has never gotten me in trouble. It's only when I've tried to do five minutes or six minutes, and I'm still going down an opposite direction away from where I was accepting, and now I'm going five minutes down, and it's 10 minutes back, and it's 15 minutes, and then you miss, you know, sometimes DoorDash will send you an order that's, you know, right after the fact, and they will hold you accountable if they if they if the app detects that they think you're multi-apping or not heading right to where you're supposed to go, and then they're going to hold you accountable. Now Uber and Grubhub they tend to send you orders where they're still being prepared. So I've found five minutes is a sweet sweet spot for them. So if say you you're, say you're on Grubhub order and you've got Uber and DoorDash, turn Uber on five minutes out, DoorDash two minutes away. That way it gives like Uber three minutes to send you an order. And then if DoorDash, if, that, if they haven't sent you something or they send you something and it doesn't meet your standards, DoorDash comes on and it gives those two apps the opportunity to get your business. Now, I recommend, you know, you can always be cycling through the uh, shopping apps and, you know, Spark, Instacart, Shipped, uh, GoPuff, any of the ones that you're involved in, you can be cycling through those apps and say, okay, if I find something great, um, then you can just leave off those apps or, you know, pause and unpause the DoorDash app as long as DoorDash will let you do that. So those are the three things that I want you to remember. Um, I apologize for the bad handwriting. Um, but those are the three keys to multi-apping. Now let's get into the fun stuff here. Let me show you a couple things. So this is how, this is my S22 Ultra, which is what I, um, use on a regular basis. Um, and the first thing you want to do is arrange a folder kind of like I have here. This is my delivery folder. 
And the reason why is because this almost becomes like a dashboard that you can use. And I'll show you what it can do for you and why this makes it easy. Because if you have this up, you can easily pop in and out of the apps. So the first thing you're going to want to do um, when you go in, and we'll go ahead and go live. So this is the uh, Maximo app. This is what it looks like. And Maximo doesn't have all quite all the information that the Driver Utility app hub has, but you can set it up. I have it set up so it kind of, you can click into each app um, and, you know, it, it, it easily takes you into each app by using that screen. And you'll see the way we set this up, how easy it is and, and how, you know, interactive that can be. But let's first go online with all the apps. So here we go. We click that button. Now, I am not touching Uber the screen. Is now right now. Online. All right. I apologize for that. I think I had reset my cache and everything because I was having problems getting my uh, hotspots up. Anyways, um, as you can see there, normally it would automate itself. And let me, um, I'm going to go over here. So I'm going to demonstrate to you when you go offline. So we are go offline on this app. You see, I'll click the button again. It takes you offline. So I'll just do a little demo here of how that works. I'm not touching the screen at all. So you click that button while you're driving. This is what's nice. You're on a DoorDash order and you want to go online with these guys. Boom. And we'll do it again one more time. Boom. It's going to. It, Uber is like now online. Right through all the apps. Get you right online. And then brings you back into the final app that you're at. Now, the, once you're online, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, you know, bring up the, the, the app switcher menu. Click on the app itself, and it gives you these options. Open and pop-up view, open and split view, keep open app info. You're going to want to open and pop-up view. Now, I've resized this window, but you can resize it to your liking. I've resized it um, and made it so that it's almost the full size of my phone, as you can see. And then you're going to put this in pop-up view. And I'm going to show you why you're doing this in a minute. And we'll go ahead and resize this app. And boom. So now you're going to have both of those apps in pop-up view. Now, this is why, this is the interface. So I'm, you're driving around, you have your deliver interface up, and you go, I want to check Uber. Boom. It pops it down. You put it back up in pop-up view. You say, I want to check Grubhub. Boom. It pops it down. Now, the nice part is, is because Maximo is controlling your experience, and because Maximo will automatically push the screen anytime you have an offer. If they're up there like that, it's going to pull it down and show it to you. And it's nice because it's going to allow you to pull down. So if, let's say, Grubhub sends you an offer, um, you know, so Grubhub sends you an offer here, and then Uber sends you an offer. Well, now you can kind of move it around and see both offers if you need to. And as soon as you pop that back up, there's Grubhub. You're not having to switch between apps or anything like that. And it can really make it easy to interface between the two. Um, the other thing is, is like I said, it just creates an easier way for Maximo to pull, to open the app up and bring it to screen, which is important for it to be able to read your screen, take a screenshot, etc. So Maximo, what it's going to do here. Um, is it is going to, if you allow it to, auto accept or auto decline, or it'll, if you create a area where you, it's an override area, which I always create an override area. In other words, it's an in-between and normally that's in between about, um, seven and $10. So I'm going to look at any order between seven and $10. That's at least a dollar or more a mile. I'm going to put my eyes on it and decide, do I want to do that order and does that make sense right now? You can do that, and then that way you can manually decide on that order. Otherwise, if it's less than $7 or less than a dollar a mile, the way I have it set up, it's going to auto decline. If it's $10 or more and it's at least $2 or more a mile, it's going to auto accept. Now, you got to be careful because you can get auto accepts in place if, if the apps aren't turned off before, like say you accept the DoorDash order and accept, I've had that happen you, and you end up with two orders accepted going two opposite directions and then you're going to have to cancel one of them. But that's what makes it super nice 
is that you can have these apps on with your parameters set up and it's doing all the work for you. And then the only times you have to look at your apps or look at the offers really is when you have that in between area that you set. And I set the same in between for Uber between seven and ten dollars. Now DoorDash 625 is the spot of extra tips. So I will set up for dinner and busy times anything between six twenty five and ten dollars I'm looking at and anything and it's got to be at least ten dollars or two in two dollars a mile for it to auto accept. So anything that's not two dollars a mile I'm looking at as well. And then if it's slower on, on, on the apps, you can go in and adjust. And I'll show you where you can do that. You can go into the settings here. And we'll just pull up Grubhub. And you can see you can adjust all the figures at any time. Distance, mount per order, per mile rate. And you can see the different things you can you can set up here. But I will go in and lower that. So, you know, there during slow times, I will set everything to five dollars. You know, anything less than five bucks, I'm not going out on the road for. But if it's five dollars, um, you know, and and a dollar a mile or more, I'll at least put eyes on it and determine is it worth my time right now because it's slow and maybe I maybe I just want to get working. Um, so you can do that. You can adjust your settings, and like I said. What's really nice about this is if you're driving around or you're doing stuff in your, you know, in your car while you're waiting, you know your phone is going to just take care of business for you. And then when something doesn't auto decline or auto accept, it's letting you know right away, okay, wait a minute, it's going to be hanging on your screen and it's going to speak to you. These apps will speak to you. So it'll tell you, you have an order, blah, 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 and it's going to be sitting on your screen. You can go look at it. All right, and I don't like it. I like it. And then you go get to work. And then once you accept the order, it's going to go ahead and take the other app offline. And it will interact with the DoorDash uh, app through the driver utility helper as well. It'll automatically do that if you have it set up. And that's the part I was talking about with the control factors. That when you get a little bit more experienced or, uh, you know, in its, in its uh, you know, busier times, you may want to go ahead and just turn off the... Um, the DoorDash functionality, and in this case here, you're gonna you're gonna see um, let's see here. You can see there it says DoorDash options. Pause and unpause the Dasher app when you accept or complete a trip. So you can turn that off, and it won't go and turn the DoorDash app off. And again, it's something that I think as you advance, when you first start multi apping, just let the app do the work for you and get comfortable with the idea of multi-apping and having multiple apps in the process. Once you get to a point where you're comfortable and you're, you're feeling good, turn that off during the busier times so that you can turn the apps back on. Because here's the thing, you don't want to be overriding this stuff because it, it's using the accessibility on uh, options on your phone. And if the app I've done this, I, I you know, immediately I, I start messing with it, you know, and thought, well, I'll leave it on. And it, no, it messed everything up. It, it got caught in this loop. It, you know, I turned the apps back on. It thought it needed to turn them off. It couldn't get it done. I ended up having to just turn my phone off and turn it back on just to get everything back and turn all the, turn all the uh, stuff off, pull over and end up costing me time and ultimately money because I'm having to, you know, troubleshoot my phone in the middle of a busy dinner hour. You don't want that. So, you know, you want to turn off the dasher option and, and I'm going to show you in driver utility, you want to turn off the maximum controller option because if you don't, you're going to have problems. All right. So let's jump into now. We got this set up here. Um, we're live on Grubhub. We're live on Uber Eats. And again, I'll show you before I leave out of Maximo why there it is right here. This is why it's nice by having the pop-ups up. Number one, these apps are operating in the background. Okay. So they're not going to sleep. You can download um, additional, uh, it's called the Good Lock app, and you can download it and make it so that it will prevent apps in the pop-up, in pop-up mode, which I already have it downloaded, from going to sleep. That's very important you do that because you don't want them going to sleep. You want them working in the background. And, you know, again, is it go it's going to put a little stress on your phone. You can see I'm using 5.8 gigs of memory out of 12 gigs. Um, but 
you know, you want that to be active in the background. So let's go in here. So the next thing is, is the driver utility helper app, which is the next piece of this. This is what runs your DoorDash app. And there's a lot more here. This costs $9.99. Um, and as you saw there, there's an issue right now with the bring the screen, although I have not experienced it yet, but knock on wood, hopefully I don't, but we're sick. But you can see there's a lot more information here where it's going to give you all this information for the week, for your shift. Um, and it'll, you know, it'll give you a breakdown of the different orders that you've done. Uh, so right now we've done nothing today because we haven't worked today. It gives you a camera that you can utilize that to, to take timestamp photos. Um, you can click in and see your history. Um, let's see. I don't know. I guess I clicked down on that on accident here. Let's sign back in. I apologize, guys. You can click into your history and you can see different days. So this is like, you know, requests. You can see what the average request was $4.87. And it gives you good insight into saying, wow, you had a slow day or you didn't accept a lot of orders. Well, this is why, because DoorDash was just sending trash this day. You can see it's how terrible it can be sometimes. Um, and then it'll give you a perspective on looking at like, well, when did I go out that day? And, 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 you know, making sure then you might target a different time of day to go out if you start regular. But it gives you an amazing amount. You can see this month, I've declined 377 offers, completed 41, and earned $430.66 on the DoorDash platform. So just a lot of great information. But what you can do, you launch the app here. We're going to launch the app. And we're going to go in here, and I'm going to dash along the way. A new shift is available. I'm going to go to 1030. And we're not going to actually dash, but if something comes through, at least you guys will get to see it. So I'm not going to be unhappy with that, because DoorDash tends to um, send stuff, even when you're dashing along the way. And I got a couple restaurants near where I'm at, so I would expect something might come through. But we'll see. So you're going to put this in pop-up mode as well. So now... We are live on all three apps, and if I wanted to add a shopping app in there, I could do that. And again, the nice part about it is, let's just we're put it. We're not going to go live on Instacart, but I'll just put Instacart up there, just so you can see it and you can see how this works. And there's Instacart, bam. So the like I said, my ideal perspective is to work from this screen right here that you're seeing. So if I'm multi-apping, I have this up, I'm driving around, doing whatever, you know, waiting. When an order comes, it's going to pop up on your screen just like this. And it's going to either accept, decline, or hold. And that's really nice. So I'm going to be, be looking at it. If I, Like I said, if I accept the order, then I'm going to go in and manually turn off Grubhub and manually turn off Uber Eats. But the nice part is I don't have to go into the apps to do it. I just go into Maximo and hit offline and off it goes. Now, with the Driver Utility Helper app, I'm going to show you Driver Utility Helper app will not take your DoorDash offline automatically because it can't. You're going to have to manually pause it. Now, it's important that you go in and you pause the app yourself Okay, um, and you don't, unfortunately, if you use the functionality of saying, you know, there's an option there that says pause orders after the fact, if you do that, I've gotten caught with this several times, driver utility helper, one of the functionalities of driver utility helper is to combat DoorDash constantly taking you offline, they will go in and put you, in, and it will automatically put you back online, so if you choose to utilize the function where it keeps you online, you are going to, you can't utilize the take me offline after next door. You're going to have to manually go in and do that. Um, and to me, that's a small price to pay for, for what it, you know, what it brings because it is very nice when DoorDash does the pause and guess what? Your, your app driver utility helper app just goes in and unpauses. So that's beautiful. So anyways, so let me walk you through here now the scenario just so you can visually see what's going to happen here. We're going to do an imaginary scenario because, like I said, we're, we're, we're not we're live, but we're not really live. So this is uh, – let's just uh, look at it like this, all right? So DoorDash pops up. I'm checking. You know, I can check each app. Uh, there's Instacart. Boom. 
Nothing on Instacart. All right, DoorDash pops up. Order comes up, auto accept. So now we're live on DoorDash. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Maximo. I'm going to hit offline, and it's going to go ahead and take me offline. Boom. And, oops, and I interfered. See, I, you don't want to do that. Um, so I got to go, let it come back up and it will go ahead. It will pick up right where I left off. I got impatient and sometimes that happens. And, uh, I don't know what's this. Beauty, uh, we've updated your hourly guarantee. Okay. I don't know why it's giving me that information. All right. So anyways, so now we're offline on both. Now you're going to have to minimize those once it does its work and you can go back into the DoorDash app. Now what I will do is I will maximize the app, obviously, because we're working it. But I've got Uber and Grubhub minimized, still at the top of the screen, leaving them there. I've still got Instacart minimized at the top of the screen. So if I want to check out Instacart, I can pull that up. And there is Instacart that I can continue to check out. Or if I had other apps in there, Shift, Spark, whatever. Now, this little floating widget, you may be wondering what that is. What this is, is this is extremely nice because this will allow you to get to the camera right? Um, and I apologize to turn my, my selfie camera off, but it will get to the camera where you can see down here, there's, um, the timestamp information. Um, and then that will allow you to go right there to that camera. Now, let's get me back up here. <clears throat> so, that automatically does that for you. Now, the other thing it will let you do is if you notice here, they, these are pre-written um, text messages that I have already pre-composed. Pre so if I go into the messaging of a of the uh, of, of the apps, all I have to do is tap on this. It puts it in my clipboard, and then I can send that to the customer. So it automates that entire system. So I can send my introduction message. Uh, I've arrived at the restaurant. Um, I have a couple pre done out apps. If there's a delay, click, click, click saves a whole bunch of time. And then always when you're on the way to the customer, Hey, I'm on my way, especially at night. That way they know you're coming. Hopefully I have the light on. Hopefully they're there waiting for you to make that delivery, uh, uh, really, really smooth. But that functionality is tremendous with driver utility helper. It's another thing that they bring to the table. But anyway, so we're on the app. We pick up the order now. We're getting ready to leave the restaurant and, or not leave the restaurant, but we're driving from the you know restaurant. We're five minutes out and we go into back in the Maximo with the click of a button. Watch what happens. And we'll just be patient. This time. Uber is now Everything online. Come up and there it is. Boom, boom, boom. Now you're online. So now your goal is obviously you're going to go back into your DoorDash app. Continue working, continue delivering that order. And if anything comes through from Uber or Grubhub, it's going to self pop up on the screen. And let's just say you got an Uber order. There it is. Uber order comes through. It's going to accept, decline, or hold for you to review. And then you're going to go on. Your goal, obviously, is to try to find an order before you get the drop off done or very quickly after the drop off that you have an order lined up and ready to go. And then you move on to the next one. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And if it was DoorDash, you would have to pause your dash. Um, and that is the one thing that unfortunately Driver Utility Helper app has no ability to help you with. You've got to remember to go in and pause and unpause your dash if you end up on a long order. But that's it, guys. It's really simple. You know, the key is making sure that you run as many apps as you can to create volume. And then once you get an order, you settle on the best order that's available for you to work, turn off the other apps, work that app, work that order. Then uh, prior to um, arriving at your destination, turn on your other apps and attempt to try to find another order. And if it's busy, 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 you should have no problem doing that. If you're going to good areas that uh, are right in the heart or near other restaurants, you should have no problem 
uh, getting orders, and it should flow really nice. And the goal is is to keep yourself working and keep yourself working the absolute best valued orders the entire time you're out. And if you do this, you will make money with no problem. You will hit your goals with no problem. And the Driver Utility Helper app and the Maximo app are absolutely game changers when it comes to making things safe for you on the road and changing the way everything, you know, changing how you work um, in terms of taking a lot of stress out. I can tell you when I work without them, it's, it's uh, a lot more stressful. Now, the only thing I will say, the only caveat that I will throw out there is I do believe sometimes when Android is going through its updates, like it will update my phone and then the apps will have to update and then sometimes the driver return. During some of those times, connectivity issues become a problem. Hence why I always have my iPhone collection to be able to plug and chug in. If I feel like I'm not getting uh, a quality experience, if I feel like I'm missing opportunities, I will go ahead and shut down my Android, log out of everything, pull my iPhone out, and go to work with my iPhone. Uh, sometimes you got to do that. Hence why I always recommend that you have an iPhone and an Android phone so that you're always well ready to go. Now, I recommend if you're going to multi-app on an iPhone platform, I think you need two iPhones. Um, and I'll get into that on my iPhone video. Hopefully, you found this video helpful today. It's a little bit long, but there's a lot of material to include. I wanted to show you what these apps look like and how it worked. Um, if you did like this video, hit that like button. Share this video with somebody that you think could gain benefit. And hit that subscribe button. Uh, so you're here for any other future videos. I have a lot of other videos in regards to, to gig tech, uh, multi-apping on the iPhone platform. Uh, I have invested heavily in a lot of tech and tried out a lot of tech. I have a lot of insight to bring you over the last 18 months. I've been, It's been something I've been wanting to do and wanting to gain insight on. And I feel like I'm finally ready to talk about it and give you guys some um, some suggestions. And hopefully also get feedback from what you guys are doing out there. And together we can get better. All right, guys, stay profitable, stay safe. And of course, as always, I'll talk to you soon.